praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for Lexio on the Go. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our readings are taken from 1 Peter 3, verses 8 through 15, and the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 20 through 24. And these are the readings for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, so Matthew 5, 6, and 7 um, are the Sermon on the Mount. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples and uh, pretty much uh, speaking about um, that he is fulfilling and perfecting the law. So, of course, Jesus is God. He is the lawgiver, um, but he is the one that will perfect the law. So the natural law, I think it's important just to talk here a little bit about how Adam and Eve started with a natural law that was a, a law that was given by God, written on the hearts of, of every human. So we do have a sense of natural law. After the fall, however, we see in, in, in some basic core things, um, we, we, are, we are deprived, we fall into wickedness. Um, we read during the time of Noah that there was great violence, um, and this would, uh, of course, tie into murder. Uh, we see that Cain murders Abel, that Lamech uh, falls into murder, and so the people are very violent. Um, why is that that we digressed into this violence after we know on our heart it's written that we should protect life, right? Um, same thing we see in Sodom and Gomorrah, the depravity of uh, sexual activity, um, all kinds of depravity of uh, taking sex outside of marriage, when we know, of course, at the beginning, uh, God created man and woman within marriage to uh, procreate, to increase and multiply. So we see that there is a sense of fallenness, uh, a, a depravity, uh, just like gravity pulls things down. It's just like this concupiscence pulls us down. So we do have the natural law. Um, because of the natural law, of course, did not seem to work um, or, 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 uh, within the history of, of salvation history, God, in His love and in His mercy, reveals to us what is called the divine law or the revealed law. And this is the great gift of the law that is given to Moses. Um, this will become then the, the source of, of um, law for the Israelite people. And, and this is very important. But even the revealed law, we know Jesus has said, has said many, many times uh, regarding divorce and other things, that there was a hardness to the people's hearts that they were not able to really um, grasp the fullness of the revealed law. So we have the natural law that isn't seems to be enough. Then we have the revealed law that man seems to resist against and in his stubbornness does not, um, does not follow. And so Jesus is going to perfect um, the law and he himself will give a law and that's the law of the gospel. And so he says several times in the Sermon on the Mount, you have heard this, but I tell you, you have heard this, but I tell you. And the one that we're going to really speak about today is uh, anger. Um, so first, let's go to First Peter. Um, first, uh, Peter tells us, uh, Peter's our first pope, he tells us that we should be of one mind, compassion one of another, lovers of the brotherhood. So being of one mind, what helps us to be of one mind, to think clearly and to think correctly about things? The gift of faith, the, the, the virtue of faith that is given to us at baptism, because this is the teachings of Christ who is the truth. Um, to compassion one another, lovers of the brotherhood. This is uh, uh, charity. The, the virtue of charity helps us to do, of course, love our brother and love our brother because of and out of love of God. Um, he says, refrain your tongue from evil. We'll get to that in just a second. And then he says, be ready always to satisfy everyone that asks you a reason of that hope which is in you. So here we have that theological virtue of hope. So faith be in one mind charity be lovers of the brotherhood and then hope be always ready to explain the hope that you have and the, the virtue of hope what we're talking about here is that i have the hope of gaining heaven i have the hope of having the divine assistance and every single grace i need in order to get me to heaven that's my hope is heaven and and in order to mainly get to heaven i need the hope for the forgiveness of my sins and the hope of the graces to overcome my fallenness and so faith um, hope and charity. These are these, these virtues that help us and are given to us at baptism and increased um, through the sacraments. And then we, when we get to Matthew 5, Jesus is going to give like four levels here. He said, you have heard it said that if you kill, you're in danger of judgment, right? If you murder, 
you are in danger of judgment. If you are angry, and added here is important, without cause. If you have anger without cause for your brother, there is a reason to be angry. Sometimes there's a just cause, but here he's talking about if you do not have a just cause. So if you're angry without a just cause, then you also are in danger of judgment. He says if you say raka or insult your brother, you're in danger of the council. And then if you say fool, which would be uh, something that would injure someone's character, then you're in danger of hellfire. So I want to walk through this. You can see the notes here. But he's talking about in danger of judgment. To kill, you're really in danger of human judgment. This means a human tribunal. If you kill someone in the Jewish law, um, you would be subject to a trial by your fellow citizens, right? Uh, by the Pharisees, by the scribes, by, by judgment under a human tribunal, and you would be put to death. The Jewish people did have capital punishment uh, prior to uh, the Roman occupation. Um, and so, if you kill someone, then you would be, that, that crime would be heard by a human uh, council, human judgment. If you're angry without judge, judgment, since anger really is, is an interior thing, obviously murdering someone, striking someone, and killing them is an exterior action. Anger with your brother, however, is an is a interior, um, interior thought, action, uh, resentment, uh, fosters right, festers inside of you. And so that is in danger of a, a divine tribunal, right? So, so humans can't necessarily judge that because it's interior. But Jesus is saying that he will judge that. That will fall um, under a, di di a divine judgment, a divine tribunal or court. If you say raka, you are in danger of the council. The council here would be the Sanhedrin, the highest court. So to insult someone, um, you would be brought before a human council, right? You can be judged. To say, you fool, which would bring injury to someone, that is in danger of hellfire, which would also imply a divine tribunal, a divine court. So what Jesus is really saying here is there are some things that can be judged by a human court. And then there are other things, which are primarily the interior things, that will be judged by a divine court. And the only divine tribunal is the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And Jesus will judge those things at our judgment um, when we die or when he comes again. So the exteriors can be judged by humans, right? By human courts. The interior, however, will be judged by God alone. This was very important for the Jewish uh, people that... Um, some of the Pharisees would just say that, well, as long as I don't break the law, right, as long as I don't really commit adultery or as long as I don't murder someone. But Jesus would say, no, what if you want to commit adultery? What if you're lusting after a person? What if you have so much anger inside you over someone that you wish them ill? That is also going to be judged. But those type of things can't be judged by a human. They have to be judged by the divine alone. Now, we are so blessed to understand this concept that there are some things in a human court, there are some things in a divine court, but we're even more blessed to understand that we have a divine court here and now. That tribunal, that court that hears our judgment is the confessional. So Jesus Christ, who is God, is the divine judge. He is the just judge, and he gave the power to loosen and bind to his church, to the priest. And so the priest, in the name of Jesus Christ, the divine judge, can loosen our sins. We go before that divine court in the confessional and we say, I accuse myself of the following. And this would be exterior actions, but, but also just as important, the interior actions. This is why in the confidior at Mass, we say, in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. So we are living out the Beatitudes, we are living out this teaching of Christ, the gospel, when we, when we live this way, that we know that it's not just about what I've done, um, but it's what I have failed to do. It's, it's also what I think and what I say. Um, in regards to the speech, remember Peter says to refrain your tongue from evil. Remember, evil is a deprivation of good. So there are two things regarding words that Jesus says here. Raka, which is an insult to someone, like saying, hey, you stupid idiot, right? That's an insult. 
But you fool is even worse. That brings injury to someone. And in the context of Jesus, remember, it's to, to say someone is a fool, it like, it's like saying um, the, the fool will say that there is no God. So it's almost like an atheist. So it's, it's, a, it's a more permanent, um, injurious, it, it brings injury to the character of a person. Um, so you can also think of this as a progression from the heart and the mind, which would be the anger, um, to the mouth, which our words then can bring insult and even injury. So we add injury to that insult. And then um, taken even to the extreme would be the exterior action. So we can think of it going from the heart and mind to the mouth, and then the mouth to the hand, from anger to insult, insult to injury, and then actually injurious words even to physically, uh, physical violence, hurting someone like that. So with all of this, we want to pray um, as Jesus had warned you know, you clean the outside, but the inside is corrupt. We want to ask Jesus and the grace necessary to clean the inside, that we can be completely cleaned, um, that we can bring our exterior and interior faults to the divine tribunal, which is uh, the confessional, and have the forgiveness of our sins. Um, thank you for joining me for this Lexio on the Go. Please take the time to visit linktoliturgy.com where you'll find fast, free, and faithful resources on the gospel. And please check out our online school, linktoliturgy.com. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Mm-hmm.